Cheap Wedding Venues 2024 Edition. Why do I sound like a news anchor? Hi, hello, lovely humans. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie Wolfer. I'm your online wedding planner. And four years ago, I made a video that I am shocked has like very low views. <laughs> so I thought, let's reboot it and talk about really cheap wedding venues because your girl has spent years uh, uh, cultivating and looking through and learning about wedding venues. So uh, a lot of times I'll get the, well, yeah, but that doesn't count in like Southern California. You guys, I got married in Orange County, like one of the bougiest counties. That's orange. And found a venue for under $1,000. And other people are like, ah, inflation. Nah, no fam. I did research on all of these venue categories before making this video as a 2024 edition. It just requires you get a little bit creative. But even more importantly, if I can impress this upon your sweet little souls, if you are venue hunting right now, you need to make sure you're asking the right questions so you don't get caught with your pants down once you sign this contract. And that is like such a specific word picture. I'm so sorry. But I find that the domino effect of bad budgetary decisions starts with the venue when you miss certain details. So please, for the love of all that's holy, go download my 20 questions that you need to ask when you're doing a venue walkthrough. It's totally free. My gift to you, just make sure that you're asking all the correct questions that a wedding planner would ask if they were in your shoes so you were fully equipped to nail this like a professional would. So if you happen to miss it, I will keep it down in the description box below. But without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. In the previous video that I made, I will leave that link down below for you, should you be interested. Um, I split all of these creative venues into three separate categories. Government owned, still sounds weird, but still applies. Private property and or unique locations. I find that when people are looking for unique venues, the one they sleep on the most is government owned properties. And that can be either county owned, city owned or state owned places that are around you. Bonus points if you actually live in that city or live in that county, you might get a resident discount, which will bring it down a couple hundred bucks. Now, again, remember, I am recording this in 2024. I looked up venues before doing this. I found very inexpensive venues that were owned by local and or state government that you can rent out for either your ceremony or your entire wedding ceremony and reception. They still exist. You're just going to have to go ahead and look a little bit harder to try to figure this out. You're like, okay, what does government own mean? Because that just sounds weird. You're right. It does. But it all fits under this umbrella. First, would be state parks. Gorgeous. What I love about state parks specifically is that you usually don't have to like dress it up a lot because the scenery is stunning. It's gorgeous. It's preserved for a reason. There are a couple downsides to working at a state park though or having a state park wedding. Uh, they might have some pretty strict requirements when it comes to food and or heating sources for the food. Um, fire <laughs> may not be allowed, certain kinds of alcohol, and you may be required to end your event at sunset. We've had a couple of state parks have that requirement. But when it's literally a tenth of the cost of some of the other wedding venues, sometimes it just makes sense. Because when you're planning a wedding, you have currency in two different forms. You have time and you have money, right? So if you are balling on a budget and you're trying to get this planned out for not a lot of money, you might need to invest some more time. You're gonna have to get a little bit creative with this, right? So a state park might not be the first thing that comes to mind, but when you think about it and it's gorgeous and it's stunning, maybe start it a little bit earlier in the day, have more of like a early dinner style event and then dancing and then finish it before the sun goes down, you could still get an entire wedding day packed into a gorgeous state or national park or preserve, but pay a fraction of the cost. Old buildings are another fantastic example. It could be an old schoolhouse, could be an old gazebo. If you go to your local county website, there should be an option to search for wedding venues. Some of them are laid out a little bit differently, so I can't claim that this is going to work perfectly with every single uh, county website, but that would be a great place to check. Or um, look up like state parks in your state and see if there's one near you. Click on the website for that and see if they offer weddings. And it doesn't have to be a building or a gazebo. It could just be an old architectural piece, right? It could be a bridge. It doesn't have to be like a physical building. We can get a little bit creative with the visuals on this. Another great one that people probably don't consider because they kind of poo-poo on it if they're not doing like an elopement style um, is a courthouse. Uh, there are courthouses that can seat up to 100 guests. Again, you're going to have to check in your local area. But if you want a very inexpensive ceremony, go to a courthouse. Ask your local courthouse or one nearby you to see if there's enough room for people to come in if you want to get married by a justice of the peace. And then you pay a very minimal amount. Or it could be rolled into your marriage license cost. I don't know. It varies city to city, county to county, state to state. So you're going to have to look in your area. But y'all know some of those courthouses are stunning, right? absolutely stunning. They've been around for like eons, right? And the wood is delicious and patinaed and delicious. And last but not least in this category is community centers. This, okay, this one's special to me because I got married at the Norman P. Murray Community Senior Center. Was it a senior center or was it a community center? I don't know, but mostly seniors used it. <laughs> Which 
putting that on my invitation, I was like, ooh, yeah, you guys are gonna be like, it's a community center. But as luck would have it, it was just redone a few years before my wedding. Community centers are stepping up their game, guys. Absolutely. And for us, I I, I always forget if it costs me $800 or $900 to rent it out. Are you kidding me? So if you're balling on a budget and you want to have a location with a bunch of people showing up, that would be a fantastic option. We had 140 people. We paid, let's call it $900. Let's call it $1,000. It's, I got married a while ago, okay? And I forgot to keep receipts. I'm sure if I looked it up, I could figure it out. Just to be obnoxious and kind of to prove a point, here is the pricing structure from the exact place that I got married today in 2024. We had our ceremony on the Creekside Terrace and our reception on the Orchard Terrace. And for renting each of those out per hour, let's see, the Orchard Terrace is $35 an hour, where our reception was, and our ceremony on the Creekside Terrace was $27 per hour because we were residents of this community, of this city, which brings our whopping total to $62 per hour today in 2024. <laughs> Just to be extra and prove a point, you guys, they exist. You just have to look. 140 people at a venue for less than a grand? That's insane. And again, remember, I still looked up some of these places and looked up some of these costs. You just have to get a little bit creative and think outside the box. Inflation is getting all of us. But if you get creative, you could save some coin. Second category is private spaces. And back in the day, I used to suggest Airbnb, uh, VRBO, private vacation rental as a solid option for this. I do believe that Airbnb came out with a no events policy. I don't know if they've since rescinded that. So if that is allowed, obviously, you're going to need to confirm it with the Airbnb host. That's a whole different can of worms. I was about to say bag of worms. I feel like worms would be more likely to come in a bag than they would in a can. Um, but that's just me. And that's because I've literally, I ordered worms once, okay? I was trying to start a worm farm. It did not go well. <laughs> but let's just call it a private home. There are so many advantages to having your event at a private home, and there are so many disadvantages. I go into great detail in two videos, one about backyard weddings and one about Airbnb slash backyard weddings. I will link those down below if you want to go take a look at that. That's where we deep dive into all of the issues that you'll run into when hosting them at a space like this, right? It sounds super cute and romantic and dreamy to get married in your own backyard, but if you haven't seen Father of the Bride, you write that down. You need to go watch that if you're considering a backyard wedding. <laughs> okay. Another option. And this is one that like I will be reading comments from the previous video. This is one that literally someone was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for this tip. I used it and it was incredible. Peer space. Do not sleep on peer space. You can find so many inexpensive venues that you can rent out by the hour. Now, some of them have a, a, like a minimum amount of time. Some of them have various different restrictions. But peer space is like, I feel like where like the serious event people go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where they're like, um, we're serious about our events. You can host business stuff here. You can have a luncheon here. You can have a wedding here, right? They cater to more than just private events. They can do um, B2B stuff. Is that B2B, yeah, businessy style events, right? But we'll run into the same issue that we would with a backyard wedding and or some of the other private spaces. Um, and that is catering. Like where you might have to do more of a catering build out kitchen style thing. They might not have a prep kitchen or a space for anything like this, as do many of the locations on this list, right? So if you are picking anything that's not a traditional venue, you're gonna have to work out a couple extra kinks and kitchen could be one of those. And the third private space um, that is very akin to a public park, uh, but it just could be privately owned, is a field. Like just, just a field. And I love this for so many reasons. But what I love about it the most is it kind of gives you a really blank canvas. But the, the downside is it gives you a really blank canvas. So you're going to have to put a lot of work into this. And lastly, we're going to go over the unique wedding venues that I covered in the last video before we launch into some of the ideas that were shared on the previous video four years ago. Holy smokes. And that is unique locations. A museum or a gallery. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You artsy fartsy pants. You're getting married in a gallery who gave you permission to be so posh, okay? Now, of course, there are gonna be very upscale galleries that are gonna cost you literally an arm and a leg to rent out. But there could be some that are off the beaten path that are going to be really unique and probably a lot less expensive than the art galleries that are like downtown, right? The bougie spots. If you get creative and you do a little bit of Googling, you could find some really, really nifty galleries in your area. Museums are another fantastic option. They're also great if they are government owned, right? So if the county owns it or the state owns it, you could kind of find um, a good option there. Again, there's also going to be the extreme version of this where a museum event is going to be so much money. If you don't work a little harder in your research to find one that's off the beaten path, of course, it's not going to be cheap, right? Like, 
if a lot of people know about it, or if it's very mainstream, it's going to be more expensive. That's the general rule across the board. A place with animals, an aquarium, a zoo. I know um, in San Diego, California, they have the Wildlife Animal Park, and there's the zoo as well. You can get married there. Those are very expensive, super expensive, okay? But then there's also really small, really cute zoos that a lot of people don't think about. There's the one in Santa Ana in Orange County. That could be a great option. There's, oh gosh, where are else are a couple other options? Go for the small places. And the cool part about doing it at a place like this is usually they are defined as like an animal sanctuary. So whatever you're paying, whatever fees you're paying could actually go towards the benefit and the care of the animals at that place, which is rad, right? Because who doesn't want to help baby tigers live their life to the fullest? Another great option, which I am still so obsessed with, and if we do a vow renewal, I might have to do it at a place like this, and that is a botanical garden. Someone did comment um, on... on the previous video, the original video, saying that there's a venue near them that's a botanical garden and it's like wicked humid and like not comfortable but makes gorgeous photos. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Again, this one, if it overlaps with like a state-owned and or government-owned botanical garden or a preserve, stunning. But a private botanical garden might be a little bit more costly. You got to use your noggin on this one. If we can overlap any of these things and save more money, we love that for us, okay? Now, a couple of the previous unique ideas that we tossed out there. In the last video could be a theater, maybe just for your ceremony, unless they have a location where you could have your reception as well. Um, a local library, awesome. Like what a way to give back to your local community, right? And support with your hard-earned dollars where you live and support your local economy and or a local school or your alma mater. So many colleges and universities have some stunning places that you can get married at. Again, depends on location, depends on how popular the school is, depending on how bougie it is, but there are some that will offer some very unique spaces for a considerably lower cost, especially if you went there. Now that's where the video stopped last time. However, so many of you had so many good ideas and shared them in the comments of the previous video that I'm gonna be sharing some of them with you here and adding on a few of my own. But before we do, let's address probably the most liked comment, which I thought was kind of common knowledge and I didn't necessarily acknowledge this, in the last video, but well, let's call attention to it here. A caution for people looking to venues like parks and fields or even private homes. Work out how much things like catering, hiring tables, chairs, plates, glasses, lighting, generators, etc. it's going to cost and add it onto the cheap price of the venue. I wanted to do a field, but after I worked everything out, it was the same price as renting out a nearby winery venue that already included catering and furniture, and I didn't have to go through all the stress of organizing all those extras that you need in a blank venue that most venues just include. Yes, there is an element of truth to this. Obviously. Obviously. Here's why I want to call attention to these inexpensive and or cheap places, is because you have the ability to get creative. If you decide that you don't want to rent chairs and you want to have a picnic wedding and borrow blankets from people, you might have just saved yourself $1,500 in rentals. You don't have that option at a standard wedding venue. Most likely they're going to be like, what? No, we don't have a space for you to picnic. It's all concrete. Or like, no, we come with tables and chairs. So you're almost boxed into paying a little bit more and you're locked out of the creative options that could get you a lower cost. Yes, if you go for a shell venue, which is literally just a shell of a space, it doesn't offer any extra amenities, you will have to build these out. You might have to build out the kitchen, like I referred to earlier. A food truck's a really good option for that, by the way, because they come with their kitchen all self-contained. Um, keep that in mind. Write that down. You might be able to borrow furniture from a local church or a local organization. That's what we did for our event. We were able to borrow tables and only rent chairs for our wedding. The reason that these cheap venues should still be called into attention, even though they require more work, is that they give you a lot more freedom than some of the traditional venues do, and they come with a lower price tag. But there still is another currency that we're operating with here. Remember, this will take more of your time. But if you don't have money and you do have time, I hope these ideas will inspire you. Now to the comments section. I just got married two weeks ago in an old movie theater that had been redone all gold and emerald that it was gorgeous and made the perfect old Hollywood themed setting. My husband and I gone on one of our first dates there to see Casablanca. We only paid 150, 160 if you count the $10 for popping enough popcorn for all 96 guests. It was an amazing place for photos because of the balcony and our names on the marquee. Plus, everyone said they were the most comfortable seats any wedding had. <laughs> a lot of colleges and universities have large halls you can hire. Most provide catering as well, and the venue fee usually isn't that much either. <laughs> See? Told you. I will be viewing a peer space location Saturday for $102 an hour, which is honestly the best deal for a venue that holds 120 people that I have seen in my search. I truly recommend peer space. It's going to save me over $4,000 from the average venue cost in Los Angeles. That's California. 
I'm telling you guys, you have to look through these options. They're so fantastic. Another avenue to explore in the same vein as community centers, event halls belonging to fraternal organizations like the Elks, Eagles, Knights of Columbus, VFW. I don't know what that one is. What's VFW? These can be hit or miss as sometimes they're on the dingy side, but some are beautiful. They tend to be cheap and usually even have a bar and bartender included too. Never thought about that. Never in my life. But hey, if you can find one that's like not too shabby, it's on the cheap cheap. This one get this one made me chuckle a little. <laughs> my husband and I got married in a Victorian cemetery, and no, it wasn't a goth kind of wedding. <laughs> Where we live, there's this beautiful Victorian cemetery that's essentially in the middle of a woodland and they have a wooden structure in the middle of it where you can get married. It was magical. For our reception, we hired an old fire station turned cafe with massive red fire doors and a really chilled vibe. A bit different, but was definitely able to add a lot of our personal touches and make it our own. How many of you would get married in a cemetery? Like, by show of hands. I don't know. If I, I don't know if I would. Maybe I would. <laughs> I don't know. We're getting married at our local race course. <laughs> what? for ceremony and reception. Cheap as chips. They have had many weddings there. And we have the whole grounds for photos as well. And with the hills on the other side of the road for our backdrop. On top of it, we have day before setup and day after, providing no one else books a Sunday for teardown, all included in the higher costs. Edited to add sports grounds, footy, soccer, basketball centers are also a go-to as well, if, especially if you're a really sporty type person. Just saying. I am not a sporty type person, but thank you for your suggestion. For $500, my sister got married in a dance studio, which looked like a beautiful ballroom with a chandelier and a foyer. It even had a warming kitchen. It wasn't normally used as a wedding venue, and that was why it wasn't expensive. My stepmom and the groom's mother catered the turkey dinner. She got two bottles of wine for every table, and there was beer. I think it was genius to throw a wedding there. The wedding was $5,000 for 200 guests. There's a part of this that's like super clutch, really key. If you can find a location that has not hosted a lot of weddings, they haven't seen a lot of things. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying we're exploiting their lack of knowledge, but they're going to come with a cheaper price tag. The reason that really expensive, all-inclusive venues are so expensive is because they've seen some things and they really want to control how your event goes. Why? Because they want it to be good for you and they want it to be good for them, for their staff, for their image. They want to get a great review afterwards. So they're really going to cultivate the experience. You will not get that kind of white glove service when it comes to a dance studio that's never hosted a wedding before. However, if you can find a location that says, yes, absolutely, we will host your wedding, they will probably be eager and they will probably be lax on a lot of their roles. We are not going to take advantage of this, though. That would be awful and deplorable. What a great word, deplorable. But again, time versus money. If you don't have one to spend, we can spend the other. I feel like we're forgetting one major inexpensive venue. Churches. Yeah, I don't know how I forgot churches the first time around. <laughs> No clue how I forgot that. <laughs> Some churches require you to be of the same denomination as the church you're wanting to get married in, but not always. There's gorgeous glass chapels, churches with stained glass, old rock churches, etc. I personally got married in my own church, so they didn't charge anything since I was a member, and luckily for me, my church is a pretty one. Some of them are not so pretty. <laughs> like the church we're currently going to, I don't think I would ever get married in the main sanctuary. It's just not... Not for me. If you're not religious and getting married in a church is no-go, I totally understand. Which is super, super, super valid. Especially if you can find a gorgeous church that's like really, hmm, like a chapel. Don't sleep on chapels, y'all. They can be a little bit smaller and they won't necessarily work for very, very large events. But there are certain chapels out there that are stunning. Absolutely stunning. The last wedding I attended was in a train station. The high ceilings were beautiful and there was an authentic vintage feel. Suffice to say, it was stunning. Unless you're a fan of Yellowstone. We don't want to go to the train station. Unless you're inviting them to the train station. We're not taking them to the train station. I feel like that delineation is very important. Love this video. <laughs> Thank you. My fiance's brother just got married at a theater company whose stage was in the middle of a hazelnut orchard and it was stunning. A hazelnut orchard. It's my favorite coffee flavor. There's tons of places and organizations that are willing to help you out on the day. Don't be afraid to ask. Y'all, get creative. Fairgrounds. Yes! Some of them can be spendy, especially if you're in a bigger, more metropolitan area. But if you're in a more rural area, they're typically pretty reasonable. And they're great if you're going for a more rustic slash country theme. My gosh, we have so many options for that here in the Waco area. We're getting married at a campground. Stop it. I love this idea so much. Uh, it saved us so much money and I was really happy that everyone will be able to stay in the same place and we get to spend the best weekend ever camping. Now, this requires a very like specific vibe of a couple, right? Like not everyone's gonna be like, yes, I want to camp before I get married. I would not do that. <laughs> or I'd go get ready at an Airbnb and then just get married at the campground like that. Do you see how big my hair is right now? 
you cannot get this kind of volume in a tent. And this last one is giving 27 dresses vibes. I'm getting married at a boathouse. There is a small restaurant where I will have the reception, but the showstopper is the amazing long pier that looks magical at sunset. I can't wait. Ah! I love this. I love this. I love this. Now, let me see if there's any venues that we missed. Okay, dance studio, nature preserve was one that I saw in there, cruise wedding, fairgrounds, movie theater, bowling alley. Stop it. You shut your mouth right now. How much fun would that be? Now, this would probably be more of like reception. I don't know how you do a ceremony at a bowling alley. I mean, I guess you could. You probably rent out the whole place for cheap, cheap. Planetarium, so cute. Campground, boathouse, brewery. Ghost Town was another one that was suggested. Ski center, women's clubs, soccer stadium, airport hangars, event halls, concert halls, and one of my personal favorites, a summer camp. How much fun would this be? Especially if you can organize enough people that want to stay, right? If they're coming in from out of town anyways, instead of getting a room blocks or a hotel block, you could have them stay on the property with you. You shut up. That's so cute. How much fun is that? So y'all, as far as unique and cheap wedding venues go, I'm telling you, the sky is limit on this. Did we mention restaurants or cafes? What else did I miss? Beaches. Beaches are usually owned by the um, county or state government. So that would be something that you have to go through that. Uh, most beaches are not, at least in California. Most of them are not privately owned. Um, they're publicly owned. I think there's a lot of ways that you can get pretty creative with this. And the reason that I love cheap venues so much is twofold. One, they're cheap. Well, it's more than twofold. Threefold. <laughs> there's a third fold. I forgot about. Two, they're a lot more flexible and a lot more creative, right? You get to have a lot more freedom in your decision making with these than you would with the traditional done for you wedding style venue. And three, they're usually very unique. Very, very, very unique. Now, there are going to be some people who watch this whole video and go, absolutely not. I'm not doing that. I will pay all my monies and someone is going to plan it all. I will pay all my monies and go with a place that has tables and chairs and has the whole kit and caboodle just ready to go for me because I don't want to spend the time doing that. And to that, I say more power to you. I am speaking to my budget brides, to my friends that are balling on a budget that also don't want to compromise on the aesthetics of their wedding simply because they don't have a lot of cash to throw at this. That was me. I wanted a gorgeous wedding and I didn't want people to know that it was under $10,000, right? I wanted my wedding to knock people's socks off, okay? And and that in that is one of my biggest passions is like, how can I help these uncompromising couples who are like, I don't have money, but we're still gonna throw a great event. I will not compromise on that. So I'm going to spend some time and spend some energy kind of developing this event to make sure people enjoy themselves. And I love the way it looks and I can be relaxed and stress-free on my wedding day. That's like my battle cry, y'all. So if you have missed the 20 venue questions, like I said earlier, it will be linked in the description box down below. Go download that, okay? Even if you've already booked a venue, it is good to download this anyways so you can confirm that you know the answers to all these. These are going to be very important and there are reasons that you need to know the answers to these because it will affect your wedding day and kind of how it's run. If I missed any ideas for cheap wedding venues, please leave those in the comments. I will. I, I gotta tell you, this feels like a pretty comprehensive list this time. I can't think of anything I might have missed, especially with y'all's help on the last video. <laughs> But knowing you guys, you are far more creative than I am. Let me know if there are any great places that we missed. Leave those in the comments. Let's help each other out. I love when you guys do this. You're the most supportive and loving community on the internet. I swear. <laughs> so that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, jump on down there, hit the like button, and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks of the uncompromising modern bride. And until next week, bye, guys.